Welcome to CBN 4's Primetime News. I am your presenter, Sheena Harry. Parliamentary representative for St. Joseph, Kelva Daru, says the $2 million St. Joseph Boulevard has been approved. You recall in 2014, on the political platform, I told you that I will deliver the St. Joseph Boulevard to you. And this was not a promise in the sky, my dear friends. The parliamentary representative stated that the $2 million has been approved to begin work on the St. Joseph Boulevard, and he has the blueprints to confirm it. Daru assured the people from the communities of St. Joseph and Layu that the project will be completed before election is called in the year 2019. After being sidelined for several months, Minister for Housing, Lands and Water Resource Management Reginald Austri is back on duty. Austri left for Guadeloupe last summer to have reconstructive surgery on his knee following some complications. And he returned to Dominica in December following a stint in rehab. The surgery was hailed a success and afforded Austri the opportunity to return to work this week in his official capacity as the parliamentary representative for Cottage. Also in the news, a customs officer, Lane Orlando Royer, was found guilty of causing death by dangerous driving by a seven-woman, two-man jury after one hour of deliberation. The verdict was handed down at the High Court of Justice in Roseau. The evidence in court revealed that Royer was driving his vehicle and struck Samuel Ailey, a security officer at the Public Works Corporation. During the trial, a number of witnesses testified that they saw Royer's black Jeep, which was being driven at a very high speed, overtake a vehicle and struck Ailey, who was crossing the road. All witnesses indicated that following the accident, Royer had not immediately stopped his vehicle, but continued driving until he arrived near the bus stop opposite E.H. Charles. Royer is to be sentenced on February 19th following a social inquiry report. An on-duty police officer and a young man on a scooter impeded traffic near Forcolet. The two weaved through oncoming vehicles as the officer attempted to stop the scooter, reportedly for traffic violations. At one point, the officer fired a shot in an attempt to hit the tire. Specific details about what led to this chase have not yet been released. At the Dominica Festival Commission's final press conference of the season, Assistant Superintendent of Police, Richmond Valentine, emphasized the importance of security during the climactic two days. He stressed that police presence will be seen and felt. Richmond also used the opportunity to clarify what is considered an offensive weapon. He called on the cooperation of the vendors, 
truck drivers, musical bands, and revelers to do their part to ensure that Carnival 2016 is safe and enjoyable. Three containers have been donated to the government of Dominica. The Dominica Disaster Relief Committee, based in the U.S. Virgin Islands, has presented two 40-foot containers with 90% of building supply and materials and 10% of other relief supplies to the government of Dominica. A small monetary contribution was also made to the government. However, the amount was not disclosed. At the handing over ceremony earlier today, Lauren Bannis Roberts, Liaison Officer, Diaspora Affairs, and Chairperson of the Dominica Disaster Relief Committee said the members of the committee were more than eager, eager to come to the aid of Dominicans after Tropical Storm Erica. Dominica Disaster Relief Committee, based on St. Thomas USVI, immediately sprang into action upon realizing the massive destruction caused by Tropical Storm Erica and spared no effort to mobilize and sensitize the local community in the United States Virgin Islands to come to the aid of Dominica. To date, we can truly see that the response has been tremendous. In October 2015, we made our first presentation. At that time, we reported that we had shipped three 40-foot containers with relief supplies to Dominica. And in addition to this, we made a financial contribution of US $19,282.02 or EC 51,833.93. Bannis Roberts added that the government of Dominica also received over 12,000 U.S. dollars and the money was disseminated to six village councils, respectively. Beneficiaries of the relief supplies are the Dominica Infirmary, Chances, the Dalysis Primary School, San Sauver Primary, Buetica Village Council, Yes We Care Program, and the Roving Care Program. According to Bannis Roberts, the third container is a donation from a corporate citizen to one of the service clubs in Dominica. Minister of Health Kenneth Daru has revealed that Cabinet has approved the establishment of a special court for dealing with environmental offenses. The initiative, services, the initiative serves as a response to the Zika virus, which was declared a regional and international public health issue by Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Health and the Environment, Helen Royer. Daru explained at a press conference that there would be a day set aside for the court to convene with an assigned special magistrate presiding over environmental matters. And he expressed his hope that this process will help individuals take responsibility for their actions in regards to the environment. I'm really pleased to announce that just yesterday at cabinet level, recognizing the, the threat of the Zika virus and of course looking at the longer term implications, especially as it pertains to keeping our environment and our country clean, that the cabinet would have given the green light in the setting up of a special environmental court a special magistrate to look at environmental offenders. I'm very sure that, that He addressed concerns from Chief Environmental Officer Anthony Scotland that environmental cases do not take priority in court and offenders roam freely without due punishment. Also in our headlines... The Prime Minister of Dominica and leader of the Dominica Labour Party, Roosevelt Skerritt's war cry, could be heard throughout the community of St. Joseph as he made a call to rally soldiers for battle. Skerritt took to the podium on the streets of St. Joe to issue a promise and a warning. I have called the family of labour here in St. Joseph to say to you, I have called the family of labor here into St. Joseph to say to you, it is fight back time. It is fight back time, ladies and gentlemen. We have sat silent for months and allowed them to strut their stuff. They have gone far and wide, 
far and wide with this insidious campaign targeting the economic welfare and well-being of Dominica. Tonight, I say to the family of the Dominican Labour Party, I have had enough, ladies and gentlemen. He said that following the last election, he had every intention of taking a back seat and not pursuing the office of the Prime Minister again. But the recent allegations made against him by the United Workers' Party, opposition leader Lennox Linton and their supporters have fueled him to reconsider that decision. I told my wife and a few very close associates and my colleagues that that was my last election campaign as the leader of his great political party. I had absolutely no intention of contesting the next election as prime ministerial candidate. But these guys have made me mad, ladies and gentlemen. These guys, these guys have made me angry. These guys are doing damage to Dominica that will take more than five years to repair. I have now told myself my work in this country is not complete. Not only will I, not only will we rebuild this country in four short years, but I will lead my forces into battle one more time to defeat Lennox Linton and the Workers' Party. Once again, he referred to members of the United Workers' Party as traitors. Skerritt stressed that he wanted to beat them badly and punish them for the wrong they are doing to Dominica. This evening, Dominicans will have the opportunity to enjoy the final stardom tent of the Calypso season. Monarch of the Tent will feature six Kaiso Monarchs, including the reigning Monarch Caressa, eight road match monarchs, including the 2015 Tide Monarch Young Bull, reigning Calypso Queen Jane, and Daspa Monarch Pigtail. Also expect performances from the likes of Earl White Jr., Comforter, Benno, Stingray, Cheka, Jamabi, Dino, Waxock, Aisha, Chris B, Webb, Trendsetter, Black Diamond, Daddy Chess, Picky, Scrunter, Son of the Saint, Shadowflow, Hunter, Lugas, and Observer. The winner of tonight's tent will win $3,000. But patrons will also be given a chance to win prizes. The first 50 will have the chance to win smartphones courtesy of the headline sponsor, Digicel. There will be a double bubble hour, Lapo Cabwit and Steel Pan. Organizer for the tent, Leroy Wadix Charles, says this season may have had its challenges, but he has been very satisfied with the turnout and participation. The show takes place at the Cicero Hotel at 8.30 p.m. The 2016 NBD Primary Schools Boys Football Championship, organized by the Sports Division, continued earlier today at Lindo Park in Goodwill. Schools of the Valley Central Zone met for day one of their competition. The teams that make up the Valley Central Zone include Trafalgar, Goodwill, Mon Prosper, Convent, Pioneer Preparatory, and Wharton Waven Berrien Academy combined. Tomorrow, the schools of the Northeast Zone will once again converge at the Tebow playing field to participate in their second day of competition from 1 p.m. The points standings after day one in that zone are the Woodford Hill and Calibishi Primary Schools leading with six points each, the Thibault and Baroness Patricia Scotland primary schools follow with three points each, whilst the Penville and Benz primary schools are yet to get on the points table. The NBD-sponsored championship will also be on show at the Castle Bruce playing field tomorrow when the Mont-Jean, 
Grandfond, Castle Bruce, San Sauveur, and Jones Beaupier Primary Schools meet for the first day of competition of the Southeast Zone. Dominica State College boys cruised to a straight set win over the Dominica Grammar School as action continued in the sports division under 20 Secondary Schools Volleyball Championship. The Dominica State College took the match 25-16, 25-9 and 25-11. Meantime in the girls division, Zaman Garments Dominica Grammar School defeated the State College girls 3 sets to 1, 25-22, 16-25, 25-22, and 25-23. And that will do it for today's edition of CBN4's Primetime News. I am your presenter, Sheena Harry.